Hello and welcome to News Click. It's been only six months you know, since a bloody civil war featuring the Sri Lankan armed forces and the liberation tigers of Tamil Nadu in northern Sri Lanka ended. Uh, and early elections have now been called for the executive presidency. The victory of the Mahinda Rajapakse presidency regime uh, and the general triumphalism for in the following the war uh, was expected to make this uh, election uh, one horse race. But out of nowhere, the army chief, uh, general and now ex-general Sarat Fonseca <coughs> announced his candidacy. Uh, this complicated the elections and it has made it even more evenly contested. Now, what does this new political situation featuring the presidency uh, mean for the still unresolved minorities national question in uh, Sri Lanka? To talk about this and more, we have with us Professor P. Sahadevan of the Center for South Asian Studies, Jawaharlal Nehru University. Hello, sir. Hello. Uh, Professor Sahadevan, uh, first things first, uh, the general refrain in uh, Sinhala politics is that uh, following the defeat of the LTT, uh, the the demand for Elam is no longer valid and also the national question has been resolved. Uh, what's your take on that? Well, uh, the Elam question has been sort of uh, dead. You know, I mean, it's made to really die. Uh, one uh, may not, need not really go into what went wrong, but uh, exactly, you know, the, uh, you know, it's partly the LTT was responsible because it had a, uh, it had a sort of, a, you know, bargaining position when it really controlled mm. the northeastern provinces it well you know sort of it when possessed arms now the LTT is dead therefore the Elam question is not so dead for long at least <clears throat> since 1987 onwards mm -hmm. uh, the Elam question remained an Elam remained an idea mm -hmm. uh, an idealistic goal as far as the general uh, the uh, the international community was concerned mm. But the LTT was wedded to the whole concept right. and it really considers a principle and right. which really wanted to really achieve it. Right. Now, after his defeat, um, the, the Elam question actually remained, uh, you know, uh, an issue that is thing of the past. It mm -hmm. doesn't really sort of figure anymore in the agenda, political agenda. Yeah, yeah. You said that the national question still remains unresolved, but there's no one to articulate it. Uh, but uh, most of the parties which have, uh, you know, privileged this issue, primarily the parties representing the Tamils, uh, they have decided to support the uh, Sarath Fonseca candidacy, uh, which is uh, somewhat surprising considering what uh, what kind of statements he has made, he had made in the past and is also a military man. But what do you make of it? Uh, well, actually, you know, it's, it shows two things. One is that there is a contradiction in the Sinhalese community in the very moment, the very fact that the Sarath Fonseca actually, uh, you know, who was with the government, who was actually a very close uh, general uh, closely associated with the government, this present government, but after the victory, who really sort of got demoralized because he was really sort of uh, his all these powers were really sort of uh, taken away, and he is virtually sort of given a secondary position in the entire you mm -hmm. know ranks of the army, uh, which irritated him, and then he really a man who was actually the solution. Then he became actually a, a opponent, political opponent of this regime, and uh, very importantly, I think this you know. Looking at this whole war, I think that both Sarath Fonseca and Mahinda Rajabaksha actually who really sort of uh, made this victory possible. Mm -hmm. But it's also quite soon, I think they became, they fell apart. And that shows, I think there's a contradiction which is coming up in the Sinhali society. Now, the uh, TNA actually really did talk to both parties, both Fonseca and Mahinda Rajabaksha. Um, and then really tried to really find out what they're really willing to offer, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Uh, I believe uh, the information is that I could really gather from my discussion with many people is, uh, is that uh, Rajabaksha was actually reiterating mm -hmm. what he has been always saying about right. when it comes right. to political solution. Nothing right. new is coming from there. Right. And uh, TNA, when it spoke to Sarath Fonseca, though he was also not distinctly sort of uh, different from what Rajabaksha is offering, but they really thought that you know somebody who's actually coming to the political scene might be willing to be different from what the regime is. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they want to take a chance. Eventually, my understanding is nothing will come out. Mm -hmm. Both are the same, uh, two sides of the same coin as far as the Sinhalese nationalisms are concerned. Mm -hmm. Most of you rightly said when you, Sarath Fonseca, 
has got a, a very uh, chauvinistic hardline group like JVP really supporting him. Right. Uh, JVP has been consistently opposed to a, a very meaningful political solution. Hmm. Uh, therefore, I think it's, you know, TNA, it's, TNA did not have a well, you know, meaningful option. But they're just going along with Fonseca simply on the ground. They want to try with a new man, when he, mm -hmm. if Adolfi is voted to power. So, if, if this is the current political climate where uh, you can't really see any change from the status quo, mm -hmm. so what do you think would be, uh, you know, a far more achievable target in the uh, uh, in the near term, vis-a-vis uh, -vis this unresolved question as such? It seems to be. I think it's uh, you know. The Tamil question actually reached a dead end to some extent. Mm -hmm. Until otherwise, there's a greater force out from outside or inside being mobilized to really mm -hmm. revive the whole agenda of mm -hmm. uh, creating a, a, a meaningful autonomy. Mm -hmm. As you rightly said, I think that you know federalism is a is a dirty word. Mm -hmm. uh, it has been since the fifty six on was right. though you know it was the Sinhalese political leaders S W R Mandanaike who really used the word federalism way back in the you know in the in the late late forties. Right. Um, you know. But <clears throat> things have happened in such a way, I think that's, you know, it's, 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 it's caught into everybody's mind that the moment you really use the word federalism, which means mm -hmm. a federalism is a first step towards the in disintegration of the country. Mm -hmm. Now, what is going to be uh, in store for the Sri Lankan Tamils when it comes to political solution, even after the election? Uh, is the revival of what has been really started. Mm -hmm. I think it's the no regime <clears throat> is to go beyond 13th Amendment. Right, right. Now, uh, you know, people are saying, I think that, you know, even uh, uh, Mahindra Rajabakshi the other day said, 13th Amendment plus one. Yes. That yes, is 13th yes. Amendment, full implementation of the 13th Amendment and the creation of second chamber, which right. are not a very, really, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to tell that these are the, not a meaningful, you know, uh, solution to address the national question. Mm -hmm. 13th Amendment has been in the statutory, the law book since 1987. <clears throat> it's actually almost the uh, the brand behind the enactment of the 13th Amendment has been India. It's mm -hmm. part of the 87 Accord. Quite, if you look yeah. at the 13th Amendment, it doesn't provide any meaningful autonomy. Right. It just decentralizes powers. Right. It doesn't even devolve powers to the provinces. Right. Right. And in, in under one provision that whatever powers given to the provinces are being taken back by the national government. Right. Because there's a provision that... Uh, that the national government, the federal government can really sort of, not federal government, but the national government, because federalism is a concept and mm -hmm. they never use it. Mm -hmm. uh, the central government can really enact or legislate or, or take policy decisions on any matter of national importance. Mm -hmm. That actually finishes off the powers of the provincial right. councils. So even if you really fully implement the 13th Amendment, the Tamils are, the, it's not going to really give them any regional autonomy. Right. Uh, therefore, you know, talking about 13th Amendment is actually, which virtually is a, in a way, uh, deceiving the Sri Lankan Tamils, who really, uh, way back in 87, onwards expressed their strong reservations about the 13th Amendment. Mm -hmm. Just because India involved, India actually uh, promised that they would go beyond 13th Amendment at some stage, they all ex accepted the 13th Amendment. But they never really supported mm -hmm. the whole initiative of, uh, you know, creating autonomy, autonomous units uh, under the 13th Amendment. So, in any case also, from 87 to 2000, uh, 9, 10, uh, 13th Amendment hasn't really sort of resolved the problem. Yes. Therefore, you know, what is the new thing that uh, people are going to offer? Nothing. Mm -hmm. So, whether Rajabakshi wins or Fonseca wins, mm -hmm. they're not going to really go beyond 13th Amendment. Uh, therefore, you know, to my mind, I think it's a, it's a pity that I think the Sri Lankan Tamils lost the game, mm -hmm. are losing the game. Mm -hmm. And the revival of the entire, you know, their political, you know, the revival of the entire movement, which movement towards create, political mm -hmm. movement towards, Achieving autonomy is something which is uh, uh, very difficult to come by even in the near future because Sri Lankan state may be weak, vulnerable, dependent, mm -hmm. but powerful state vis-a-vis -vis the communities. Right, right. It wields, you know, uh, military power, you know. Uh, 300,000 people got displaced. I believe the latest statistics is I think uh, 150,000 people still in the camp. Mm -hmm. Those who got released from the camp also are not able to really go back to their uh, homes. Mm -hmm. uh, for various reasons, either you have, uh, you know, in the name of say high security zones, uh, uh, the uh, you know the uh, the residential areas have been actually occupied by the the army. Uh, there are places where 
people are not allowed to really go. Uh, one doesn't know why because, uh, you know, I believe in, the, especially in the Vani region, I think people are not able to access to their homes. Mm -hmm. uh, the army is really still controlled uh, those areas and don't allow the, uh, doesn't allow the people to really uh, go home. Therefore, even the releasing of people from the camps also uh, has not been accompanied by a proper rehabilitation. Uh, therefore, I think it's uh, the post-war uh, trauma that the people have really faced is something continuing to really go for long, continue for long. But therefore, I think to my mind, the credibility of the Sri Lankan government, that if, not, uh, if not zero, it's completely low uh, in right. the eyes of the international community. Right. It takes right. ages. It has to prove its uh, credentials by really sort of addressing the very basic political issues that are challenging, uh, confronting the Sri Lankan Tamil community. Until otherwise, it's continued to be really seen as one of those democracies of uh, ill-defined democracies, the illiberal democracies, does everything possible to really sort of uh, scuttle the political rights of people. Okay. Uh, you know, you need really a, uh, you know, a brave leader who really take the Sri Lanka out of this kind of a mess. Right. I think that should uh, end our conversation on this note. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks.